Alright, welcome back everybody. I'm doing another colored pencil drawing of a silver lab and we're going to get started here. I have the picture of the finished colored pencil in the top right corner. Um, I was having some off and on issues with my camera trying to get like the best setting to kind of match what I saw in real life. So to some avail, I got it relatively close, but um, I feel like the vibrance is just a tad high. So just kind of bear with that, keep that in mind. <laughs> so I start with the eye, the eyes are golden color. I feel like golden color eyes, unless you're doing them as like the picture itself, you know, like enlarged. Um, they're really not that bad. Eyes, if you don't think about it too hard, don't overcomplicate it. So you know that you have, um, uh, in this particular eye, there's a really dark shadow at the top, right underneath the eyelid. And then um, this dog had a pretty good uh, reflection in his eye, along with it kind of glaring a little bit. So that's what I did. And then as I go, I kind of touch up around it. I start adding um, my silver grays, pinks, and purples into this fur. I do add some green here and there and some light umber. Just trying to get the layout of how the fur direction is going. Um, the lightest areas, I do lay down a color of white like a light layer of white and a cream so that if I need to scrape away towards the end I do do that and then on this uh, particular portrait as well I do use some mineral spirits uh, it's, it, when you use mineral spirits it just depends on what you're drawing and if you feel like you need it if you like you know what I don't need this I think this looks great without it then you don't have to use it you can also just use a uh oh q-tip like you use q-tip or like a blending stump or something um you can also just burnish your colored pencils into the paper so you can use like a quote-unquote colorless blender pencil you can do that it'll kind of blend it in though that just adds extra wax to the paper and and if you pre if you if you get to a point to where you can just go through the paper but if you like doing that you can do that i don't I don't do that. I like the, I just really like how the mineral spirits kind of break apart the wax and you really get the color coming through like, oh, this is what the color like, like looks supposed to look like, I guess in my head. Okay. So here you can kind of see it looks pretty like more pinkish and reddish. I was just trying to turn up the saturation on my camera because I just couldn't like really get a good feel if like if that was like really what it looked like on paper like what I saw and then to what the camera says so next time I'll know not to turn it up so much <laughs> but uh, just bear in mind this is a little higher saturation than than what I um, was intending so still kind of figuring out the camera settings but we're getting there <laughs> so just some I, again I have that picture up in the right corner to kind of give a better idea of what it actually was looking like so next time I'll I'll be better okay so we're kind of repeating the same on how I did on, on our left side to the right side and uh uh what colors am I using I'm using like a light gray uh, French gray. I do um, use some green here and there. You might see that. I did go in and I believe I added some more uh, this canary yellow orangey color to the eyes to kind of make them come out just a little bit. And again, this dog had a, a really good eye glare. So I feel like I've come to a great understanding of eyes as well, um, especially shape structure um, and how they appear to be looking, like, in the picture, so, like, don't get so used to just drawing, like, a circle, like, sometimes the eyes do get a little ovally and, like, distorted, depending on how 
an animal or person or subject is looking in which direction and I like how the head is turned. Are they looking up, down, left, right? Like our eyes are not perfect circles. So don't draw a perfect circle on the eye. The snout for me, I feel like, is sometimes the hardest because you really just like want to draw fur straight up. You know what I mean? Uh, instead of thinking of it going back and curving around the nose. So you might have like a little strip that's kind of more or less relatively straight up the forehead there. But there's some curvature to those furs on the nose. And I just take my time with it versus trying to rush it. Trying to get every little bit I can. I do go back through and I touch up some areas as I work on new areas as uh, the color intensity increases and as I start to fill it out like my brain's like okay I kind of want to put this a little bit here put this a little bit here and we start to really see, see it come together the shine is good I like the shine we got the shines on there and I added the dark dark shadows underneath the ears to just help give some definition like okay that is the darkest dark and then it's like what is my lightest light my lightest light is probably a, a sheen well other than the almost like the the sheens on the eyes there but like the sheen on the left side of the muzzle was almost like uh, a really light color and then there were some like light colors on the left ear and then I do do the nose here we are getting <laughs> close to doing the nose oh there we go okay so the nose I did a layer of pink and then I did do um where the the lightest light was I added white and I go in with I believe my dark gray cool gray like my really I forget but it's a dark gray um and it really adds in all those colors and then I have uh, our light umber, our dark umber as well, and just start mapping it in, and I'd go in with some grays, again, some darker colors, some purples, because this nose is like, it's kind of a pinky color, right? But you don't want to just have pink. Pink is like the undertone that comes through and we see it. So you would consider this like a red or like a gray nose, but that has like some pinkiness to it. So, so if you saw in person, it'd be like, oh, the nose is so cute, but it's not black either. But the nose always has texture. So I go through with my uh, little scrape away tool there. And I, and I'm, before I, uh, I don't think I use any mineral spirits on the nose. And if I do I missed it? I honestly don't remember. I I finished this drawing like a week and a half ago, and I'm just kind of now getting to the video. But um, as you can see, my picture now is pretty high in saturation. And again, I'll I'll make sure I fix that for the next video. But again, I have the reference up top to kind of give a better understanding of what it looks like. So it's not as red, if that makes sense. It's it, it's not as red. So just kind of. Imagine it not as red, <laughs> but at the end I do have a bigger picture like I blow up the picture so you guys can see what it looks like a little bit better And again here I have I love using the purples and I at some point I do have a light blue that comes through and I have a light blue that goes through So if you're struggling maybe to like why is my picture not really popping off the page or it just looks really flat Think about those other colors. So gray can Gray can easily be used with a lot of colors. You got to look at um, some main areas. So some areas that I like to look at are the shadows. If I were to take the shadow away or like open up the shadow, what kind of colors do I see? So don't just look like, okay, I know this is silver lab. Don't think about it that way. Think, think of more in... Uh, Okay, if I say simple terms, you guys are going to be like, you just said it's a silver lab. How much more simple can that be? Uh, look at, like, imagine if you didn't see the dog and you just saw an up-close image of, like, the left side of the cheek. You'd be like, okay, I see some grays, 
some tan color maybe, uh, some creams, right? And maybe you're like, you know what? I kind of see maybe some purple. Now, the only reason that you might see some purple is because when you mix purple and gray, you kind of get that semi-cool color of a gray. So it's like semi-turned down, but it, because purple has some red in it, it might also kind of warm it up too, so depending on the purple you use. So if you use more of a blue-violet, it's going to be a little bit more cooler, but if you use more of a red-violet, it's going to be a little bit more warm. So um, the left side of the face seems seemed like a lot more a bit more warmer than the right side of the face. So the right side, I'm going to use a little bit more greens. I might have a, a hint more of a purpley, a purpley violet, a blue violet on that side. And you'll kind of start to see it come to life. Uh, the the lower part of the neck, um, for some reason, my brain couldn't compute the left bottom fur. I feel like it still turned out because like uh, comparatively to the picture, it literally looks like the picture, but I feel like I could have made it more fluffy, blend a little bit better, but that's just the, uh, so like if you've ever seen a lab in person or if they're just sitting there, they have folds <laughs> up near like their neck. Like when they just sit there, that's just like how it folds. And so that could, that I think was a fold and it was coming back out and my brain like just couldn't compute so you'll see me kind of work on that area a little bit I'll bring out my mineral spirits while I work on that let me talk about this tongue so this tongue was actually really fun to do and again it wasn't as red as you can see in the picture up top and I've progressed in the tongues <laughs> that's kind of weird to say but I've really gotten better at doing the tongues um don't be afraid to have some texture on the tongues tongues um I know this is kind of weird, but if you've ever seen a dog's tongue, like, up close, like, when they're licking your face and they're just having it hang out, just, like, look at their tongue. It is textured. It is not just all slimy, wet, and, and um, I don't know, the other word you might use for it, but I, there is some shine to it if there's saliva or if the tongue is actually wet. Uh, and the only time you really get a shine is after they've drinking some water or if they are salivating and so you don't want it to shine too much like it's not candy the tongue is not candy so it, hopefully if that helps to kind of ease in the shines on the tongue so like you can see at the very tip I have kind of a shine You're like okay that's like a tongue but the whole thing isn't uh shiny if that makes sense Okay, so I'm working on the lower part of the neck here still, and we're just adding in clumps of fur to give that, like, textured feeling. Even though it's a lab, they still have long furs. Now, is it long hair? No, but it's like a fur-like texture. So I own a Shih Tzu, my little baby. He really is. He's like a toddler for life. And he has, I have like, he's like medium long hair. Because I, usually when it starts getting close to the floor, I give him a good trim. But I don't have him short haired. Now, he has like hair. He does like have fur too. Because he's, you know, he's a dog. But labs have fur. It's short. And there are some areas that are longer, so not everywhere on the body is going to be short, stubbly hair. Usually the face is shorter, so you want to use shorter strokes or smoother strokes. And it just to give the illusion and appearance that that is fur up there and it's short and it's smooth and that reflects really well. And then towards the bottom, like with the neck, you're going to have, you're typically going to have longer hair. So don't be afraid to have longer strokes down towards the bottom. Okay, so we're working on the right side here. I feel like it did a much better job on the right side. Uh, mapping everything out, getting the curves with the hair, the highlights. And uh, you'll see me kind of work through that. The other thing with the mouth, um, the picture was a little tricky. So uh, just be careful uh, when you're going around the mouth area that you don't make one side too, what's the term, like, 
kind of lopsidey. So like in the picture on the right side, it looked as though there was like a shadow really hindering um, the curvature of that uh, jawbone, if that makes sense. So I didn't want to go too much too fast. So you'll see me kind of work on that area, maybe kind of turn it in because his head is kind of cockeyed just, just a little bit. Like he's not completely straightforward. And then that's just like how the shadows forming on that side too. It was, uh, I'm using some darker cool gray colors coming in. I do use a little bit of Master's Touch pencils too. So don't be afraid to mix and match colored pencils. If you're worried about light fat fastness and all that stuff, I'm not, I'm not like, like these portraits aren't thousands of dollars for my commissioners. Um, I, for an 11 by 14 currently, I want to make this video, um, is $150 USD. Uh, this size is an 8 by 10 and, um, they had asked if I could kind of just make it stretch all the way to the 8 by 10 because I couldn't afford the 11 by 14, which is fine. It didn't, it didn't really bother me. It just took a little bit longer because I typically come in on the edges a little bit. So the dog drawing would have been a little bit smaller, um, but that's what they wanted. And it's still smaller than 11 by 14. So the paper itself, what paper do I have here? Okay, I literally took it out. The paper itself is 9 by 12, but I mapped out the 8 by 10. So when they go frame it, um, it'll frame in there really nice. Now, the left ear might get slightly covered up, but if they get a slightly bigger frame in a mat, it, it'll fit in there just nicely. So, Okay, so we finished the ears. The ears are always fun for me. I always say, I, sometimes I save them for last, I think, but they really add that character to any animal. Humans are different. I Human ears are just, boop. <laughs> Dog hairs are so much more fun to do. Cat ears. Oh, I haven't had anyone commission a cat yet. I'm, my sister loves cats, and I think I might see if she has any good cat photos. I know I can go online and get one, but it's like... I don't know. It's like one thing when you do it for somebody else because then they're like, oh, that's my so-and-so. That's my dog. Da, 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 oh my gosh. Like, that's the rewarding part for me. All right, so we are coming to the end of the video. Thank you guys so much for watching. I hope that this might have helped you or any explanations that I do. I know um, these are fast drawings. But I hope that this might inspire you to go out there and make some art. And there's the photo from my camera. So take it with what you will. Um, it's just, you can't explain what it looks like in person too. So did my best putting it up there, getting it relatively to what it looks like in person. So... Anyway, I hope you guys have a great rest of the day. If you have any questions or anything, put a comment down below. That'd be great. If you guys want to check out my website too, um, that'd be great. I believe the link will be in the description. <laughs> anyway, have a great day, guys. I'm going to go get some coffee.